Now be honest, wasn't that a cool effect? Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be recreating the double jump from one of my favorite games, Hollow Knight. So if you get value out of the video, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe for new content. I upload almost two times every week, so without further ado, let's get started with this tutorial. Alright, so right here I have a demo scene. Uh, I, have the, I have the player right here, a little square object. And I have a couple of tiles and background. I experimented a bit with lights in Unity, 2D lights in Unity, and I'm gonna be publishing a tutorial on how to use 2D lights in Unity 2021. And if you wanna see that, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon. So right here, if I play the little demo, I can go left, I can go right, but I can jump exactly. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna go back to the script. This is a basic script to control your horizontal movement. So we call the input.getAxis raw horizontal and we put it inside a float variable called x input. You can check out this video if you want a full tutorial on 2D movement in Unity. I'm gonna create a public layer mask. What is ground? Private bool is grounded. A public transform variable called check ground and then a public float variable called check radius and lastly a public float variable for jump force so let's create an if statement let's put an if input dot get key down key code key code dot space so if we are pressing on space and and is grounded what we want to happen is we want rb dot velocity equals vector two dot up times jump force so what this will happen so what this will do is that it'll control the rigid body's velocity in the upwards direction and then multiply it by jump force which is our jump force public float variable we didn't exactly specify when the is grounded bool variable is true and when and when is it false so we'll just be specifying it right here we're gonna say is grounded equals physics 2d dot dot overlap circle and we want to put the overlap circle as check ground radius of check radius check radius radius and the layer mask is what is ground check ground dot position awesome so we'll be creating a circle under the player to check if we are grounded or not so we'll be seeing that later on so now if we save okay so let's go to our player game object we, I've set the speed to 760, so to control what ground is, we want to go to our ground box colliders, and we're going to add a layer to it. So, I'm going to call the layer ground. Now, I'm going to go back to the colliders, and I'm going to select its layer to ground. So, basically, I'm selecting the ground, and I'm setting it to the ground layer. So, layers are basically a way for uni the Unity game engine to differentiate between different game objects so for example this ground has a ground layer but our player has another layer for example a player layer and so on and so forth so right now i'm gonna go to player i'm gonna go down and i'm gonna select what is ground and i'm gonna set it to ground player and i'm gonna create an empty game object i'm gonna call it check ground awesome and i'm gonna set it under the player game object i'm gonna go back to the player and then drag and drop the ground right here gonna select the check radius to 0 0.25 and the jump force to something like 650 or maybe 700 I'm gonna change the gravity scale to something like 9 and I'm gonna freeze the Z rotation now if I play okay that was a bit too much all right so what's happening right now is we are creating an, an invisible sphere right here and what this sphere does is it checks if we are colliding with the ground layer this ground layer it checks if we're colli colliding with the ground layer and it sets its radius to 0 0.25 you can change the radius if you want but that works for me so how to change this is if we want to do a double jump we can easily go back let's create two int variables one private int variable let's call it jump counter and another public int variable let's call it reset jump counter let's say our jump counter is two so we can jump two times let's just delete the and is grounded let's say and and jump counter is bigger than zero we can jump and if we are is grounded we want to set the jump counter equals reset 
jump counter. And so every time we jump, we want the jump counter to decrement by one. Now, if we save this, let's go back and awesome. Let's set the reset jump counter to something like one or so we can jump an extra one time. All right. So if I press on jump, we can jump once and we can jump another time. Okay. So we've run into a problem right here. You could say it's a sticky situation. <laughs> Get it? It's actually really easy to fix. You can right click in the assets menu, go to create, go to 2D, select on physics 2D, set your friction to zero so it doesn't stick to platforms. Now just select the physics material, hold on it, and then give it to the player game object. And the problem is fixed. Now just to explain this, if we click on the space bar and jump counter is over zero, we want to jump, but we want to decrement the jump counter by one. So it decrements whenever we jump an extra time. And if we are grounded, the jump counter equals reset jump counter, which in the Unity editor, we have set it to one. So we can jump an extra one time. You can actually play around with the reset jump counters. So if you want to do it like two, you can jump an extra two times. If you want to make it at three, you can jump an extra three times. And now it's time for the effects. I started off by making this effect. Whenever you double jump in Hollow Knight, there's this effect. So I made it and added a bit of glow to it. You can use any 2D editor you want. I then added it to my scene and made a particle effect out of it and instantiated it when our player double jumps. So I added these two lines of code to check if we're not grounded to spawn this effect. And if we double jump and we're not grounded, it spawns in the effect. I then added sound effects. If you want to learn how to add sound effects, you can check out this video I made about sound effects. I drew in the wings using Photoshop. You can use any 2D photo editor you want. If you don't have Photoshop, you can use GIMP. It's free and it's basically like Photoshop. I then added the wing to my scene. I made a duplicate of that wing. Oh, and one extra little tip. If your scene has lighting and you don't want a particular sprite to be affected by lighting, you can just go to the sprites material and set it to sprites default. I put it next to the player and then I made a parent object and I called it wings. I then parented the entire wings game object to my player. I then added a couple of lines of code to tell the game when to enable the wings and when to disable them. And now let's play the game to see if it works. And right here, I just added the jump particle effect. I added the jump sound effect. I added the wings. The particles and the wings work. Awesome. Click on this video for an in-depth explanation on the jump mechanic, or click on this video for an in-depth tutorial on particle effects. And don't forget to subscribe to the Game Dev Show if you like my content. And I will be seeing you in the next video.